variety of moves have been made in the sphere of ideology, uh, which have led to a kind of general acceptance of an idea of meritocracy, an idea that uh, not just that um, the United States and Britain and perhaps the rest of the world should be meritocratic, but that they more or less are. Um, well, I, I disagree with both of those claims. Um, I think that to the extent that meritocracy is a mechanism for producing classes, it's as objectionable as any other mechanism for producing classes. I don't think that there's any reason to think that you could run a society in which you paid everybody exactly the same amount of money or in which you treated everybody with exactly the same degree of respect because money and respect are things that we use to mobilize people to do things. But I do think that it's not necessary to have the kind of um, stratification and disrespect for people at the bottom that is a feature of modern meritocratic societies, as it was of feudal societies and of high capitalist societies in the 19th and early 20th century. But the second reason for criticizing this ideology is it's completely false. Um, neither Britain nor the United States is remotely meritocratic. You can predict with unfailing accuracy <laughs> uh, who will get most of the top jobs by looking to see who their parents are. In the United States, one of the reasons is that the um, the public education has, the, the state's commitment to education has somewhat declined, and so more and more middle class and upper middle class people send their children to private schools, which gives them an enormous advantage in the, even after university, uh, class, not so much through money, but through social capital, allows people from, uh, with, with upper class or upper middle class parents, access to opportunities that um, other people don't have. A lot of jobs in things like publishing and, uh, and the media involve uh, internships. Young people come in as interns. Who gets the internships? It's not an open search looking uh, to see all the young people coming out of college in the United States. It's people who are connected to people who are already in that world. And if your parents are connected to people in that world, then you will be connected to people in that world. That's why we speak of social capital. Differences in financial capital give people access to differences in cultural capital. Differences in social capital help. And the result is, it's not that you can guarantee that your child will be in the top 1% or 10% or 25% if you are, but it's way more likely. And in particular, there's a, there's a terrible concentration at the bottom, the bottom, say, 15% in Britain or of the United States, what, what's now often called the precariat, people whose lives are precarious, um, who have no social capital, no financial capital, and no cultural capital, and their children, say in Britain, um, have a 1% chance or 2% chance of going to college, right? So that's a, that's a very stratified society. The business of the accumulation of, of the best social positions by a class of people, I think that's happening globally. What's interesting about this problem is that, of course, it's a problem under capitalism, but it's a problem under communism too, under socialism too. It's really a human problem. Um, and, but it doesn't mean, that doesn't mean it has to be in every system. And we could certainly, I think, change our systems to make it less so. Class identities are not just about money. If they were just about money, we could discuss just questions of distribution of money. But they're not. They're, they're about, um, as I said, they're, they're, they're about social and cultural capital as well as financial capital, and they're about the distribution of prestige. What you've got is the competition between some egalitarian ideas and some democratic ideas on the one hand, and the very natural desire of people to advance their own children on the other. That, that is an inevitable tension in society, and we have to figure out how to handle it. Uh, I am not saying that people shouldn't love their own children more than they love other people's children. Of course they should. But we should arrange things so that that fact that, that they should and do doesn't produce uh, extra kinds of uh, inequality uh, in, in society.